Today we're going to talk about navigating the screen in the three event edition. So right off the bat, when you turn it on for the very first time, you have to initialize the system. So the first thing that will come up is initial hours. If you want the uh, system to start counting just like your boat's hour meter, and your boat hour meter had say 30 hours on it, you can start the system counting from 30 hours. So there we go. So we've entered the 30 hours, we press menu to proceed, and it now asks whether we want the system to display in miles per hour or in kilometers per hour. So in this case we want miles per hour so we will press the up key. If I press the down key it will read in kilometers. So the up key for miles per hour. And now this is important. The system we can now select it to run as a wake edition system or as a three event edition. So since this is a three event edition, we have to press the down key. Once you've pressed the down key, the system always starts life in the slalom cal mode. And in this mode, you set your baseline values. And there's a separate video on calibrating, which we highly recommend you watch. Now on this screen, if you use the menu button, you will notice how the cursor rotates around the screen. When the slalom heading is highlighted, if you press the down key, you can go to crew weight and set your crew weight value. Also, the system defaults to the new one magnet timing method, which means you only require a magnet at the entrance gate from both directions. And to confirm that, highlight the word slalom, press the up key, and this confirms that we are going to calibrate the system by the timed method. Doesn't give you a lot of time, so if you want to go back there. If I use the menu button, it confirms that we have the one magnet timing method being used. If I press the up key, I can switch it to multi-mag, but we want the one magnet method, which is the best. I can go here for the previous times if I want to see the times from the last pass. And if you're a competitive uh, driver and you want to set a wait time, so the system will time at the end of the uh, course for the skier, for the amount of time he's in the water between passes, you can set a value such as 20 seconds. Now once your baselines are all set, or if you want to just play with the system and change to the different modes, it's very easy. Once again, you will use your menu button to highlight the arrow in the upper right hand corner which means I want to leave this screen. So once again, highlight the arrow and press the up key and it gives me the different event options. Solemn trick jump, RPM, wakeboard mode, and magnet test mode. And you can just use your menu button to move through the various options. So back at Slalom, if I press the up key and select Slalom, I'm right back to Cal mode. But if you want to go to GPS Slalom, after you've calibrated the system, so once again you'll press the up key, which means I want to leave this screen, and then you will press the down key for the different Slalom options. So Cal baseline is highlighted. I can move to GPS Slalom using the menu button. Also GPS practice mode. Classic Slalom, which is the old classic RPM only mode used for many, many years. Back to my Cal baseline. And here's our GPS Slalom mode. So we will press the up key to select that. And now we are in GPS Slalom. As we look at the screen on the top left corner, it says no GPS data. That's because the boat um, is not uh, on right now. We're set for 34.2 miles an hour. This will be our digital tachometer down here. And your times will be displayed in the lower left hand corner. Now, as you move through the screen, if you highlight the speed, you can change the speed up or down. Here we've gone to 36 miles an hour or 55k. And next to the speed you'll notice a letter. In this case it's set for N and that stands for the skier weight. 
N means normal, which is a 160 to 180 pound skier. If you have someone that is a different weight outside of that category, you can and should change that. So if you highlight that, normal, if I press the down key, it shows me a light skier around 120 to 160. Only gives you a few seconds to make the selection. And I even have a featherweight skier. So for small juniors that don't pull very hard, you should really set it down to F for feather. It simply gives you a better entrance and a better pull coming through the gates and through the early part of the course. And for the guys that are really big pullers, and if you're on an underpowered boat, you can actually go up to extra large for those big guys over 200 pounds. And to complicate things even more, if you just want to do a timing pass in GPS mode to confirm that your system is working well, you can actually take it down to zero, which stands for no skier timing check. In this mode, you're not only running the baseline value, but the GPS is looking in over the shoulder and making corrections. So if you get a perfect time in Cal baseline mode and you want to do a timing pass without a skier in the GPS mode, just to confirm things are working well, you can set it down to zero. But remember, before you tow a skier, you must change that or the system will think there's no skier back there. So once again, highlight the zero and take it back up to something such as N. The other feature the system offers is the ability to tweak your set point so you can run in between speeds. And to do that, you must go to what's called practice mode. So right now we're in the standard GPS slalom mode. To go to practice, you will once again use your menu button to highlight the arrow in the upper right hand corner and then press the up key now slalom is highlighted and we will press the down key for the different slalom options. We were in GPS slalom. If I use the menu button, I can highlight GPS practice and then use the up key to select it. So you'll notice the screen basically looks the same as GPS slalom, except the word practice is now on the top. The pull, the look of the screen, the timing, etc. is all exactly the same as in GPS slalom mode. The only difference is you will notice on the left hand side of the screen now shows adjust plus 0, 0.0. Here you are allowed to tweak the set point. So for example if someone was struggling with 36 miles an hour at a certain line length and wanted to run say 35 miles an hour you can set in minus 1.0 which brings the set point down one mile an hour. So to do that you will simply highlight the adjust on the left hand side of the screen. There it is there. I will take one full mile an hour off, let go, and the in internally the system has now taken one mile an hour off the set, set speed, so it will run 35 miles an hour. And the timing has now been changed to show you an okay time for the new set point of 35. So once again, you're ready to go skiing. To see some of the different background options that Perfect Pass has, in most cases, you will press the menu and the up keys together at the same time. So menu and up takes me into the background and contrast is the very first item that you will see. Here I can change the contrast to make the screen a little lighter or a little darker. 3 is the default value, 3 or 4 look uh, generally good. If you are in a very hot climate, very sunny, and your screen is a little bit darker because of the sun, you can go in here and lighten it up. The next item on the list is backlight. If you do a lot of night running and you find the light a little bright, you can uh, turn that light basically off. Not all systems have this feature, but uh, most of the newer ones do. Also on the list is the quick list, or the name list, where you can enter people's names and preferred speeds. Tends not to be very popular on the uh, three event system. It's really more for the wakeboarders. And if you continue down the list using the menu button, you will see system information. 
And this is a uh, interesting screen. So you will press up to enter system information. And here the system will show you the version number of software that you're currently running, which is version 7.0.64. The battery voltage on your boat coming to perfect pass is 13.5 volts. So if you're having any voltage concerns or voltage issues, this is a good place to go and see if the voltage for the perfect pass is strong. And it shows the board is a mechanical Rev7. So down the road, if you're having any uh, troubleshooting issues, a technician at Perfect Pass may ask you to go to this screen to have a look at what version and what board you are running. Now if I push menu again, it will take me to the hour meter feature. Remember we initialized this uh, system at 30 hours, and because the engine is not running, we actually haven't counted any more hours, so it's still at 30. If I push menu, this confirms that uh, this system is GPS uh, capable and also paddle wheel capable if uh, so desired. And the menu button takes me back to the main screen. Now to go back to the uh, background uh, settings again, menu and up, we've already seen contrast, backlight, quick list, and system info. The next item on the list is the device test. And if I press the up key, that uh, will put me into device test. Here I can uh, test a rope switch if need be. If you were to uh, activate the rope switch just sitting in the boat, the system would confirm that the uh, switch closes. It would say on and it would beep. If I press menu, it takes me to the servo motor test. There's also a video on uh, the servo motor phase test that you'll find under troubleshooting. And uh, this is where you would go to do that test. The phase test and the rotate servo motor test are both found under the device test portion of this uh, menu. So once again I'm going to go back to the background screens. Device test we've seen. Now user settings. I'm going to press up to enter user settings and this is where I can change the speed from miles per hour to kilometers per hour if I wish. We're going to leave it at miles per hour. The next item, use your menu button, is engine setup. If I press up to enter, it confirms that this system is set up as a V8 four-stroke engine. And currently it's set up for standard RPM. Well, you've probably read that some boats require an inverted RPM to run uh, a little bit smoother. That the tack signal can be uh, more accurate and steadier uh, on some boats and others. So this boat is set for standard. I can also change it to invert it by pressing the up key. So if you want to run a uh, just a pass in RPM mode and invert it and see which uh, gives you the smoothest RPM, you can go to this screen and change it. This boat runs well standard so we're going to leave it there and use the menu button to move on. And it takes you back to the mode you were previously in. Now if we go one more time, you'll come to GPS info. Most users will never go to the screen except to set their clock. This system, if the GPS was connected, would show your latitude, longitude, and would also show the uh, time of day in your region. If the time of day in your region is not correct, you'll notice that this little uh, blocks, box is highlighted and you can change the time of day by simply using your up or down key to match your time zone. When you're done, use your menu key and back you are.